And now we receive our collaborator, Jorge Gestoso, who has more on the development and the highlights of this 8th OPEC international seminar taking place in Vienna, Austria. Be welcome, Jorge. Gladys, the first day of this 8th international seminar of uh, OPEC here in Vienna has finished and uh, definitely there's a big challenge that is going on about the future of the energy that has been discussed precisely in this occasion. The theme of the seminar is a transition of the energy based on sustainability and fairness. And precisely we did have the opportunity throughout the day to interview the director of this company that you have seen behind me, G Petrol, meaning uh, Guinea Equatorial Petroleum. Uh, we're talking about uh, Teresa Isabel Nang, and she was emphasizing one of the messages that is critical that uh, the countries, the export countries of petroleum, precisely the 13, 13 countries of uh, OPEC, are emphasizing that is fairness. She's saying we are expecting to develop, we are totally committed to a transition of energy in the future, but that transition has to be in done in a progress way. There is a lot of asymmetries between the large countries, the huge countries that are really pushing to do that transition theoretically or rhetorically, and the poorer countries, for example, the countries of Africa, that they, she says, definitely we were the least in polluting the earth, but they expect on us to keep those standards very quickly. So that is a very important message. Another important message is that uh, most definitely there is a concern about the exporters about to create stability of the market. That is key. There, there is a lot of uh, inequalities and there is a lot of uh, uh, concerns about what's going on in the world economy. Precisely, for example, the fact that the, the conflict in Ukraine is adding up that instability. Well, the countries of OPEP, they want to create that stability that could be stability of the oil, but also stability in general of the world in terms of the economy. And they want to keep the price of the oil barrel in $80. And because of that, for example, this week, in the case of Saudi Arabia, they decided to cut one million barrels a day to nine million. Uh, Russia cut 500,000 barrels a day. And most definitely, there's another countries together, smaller countries, but together, we're talking about 1.6 million barrels a day that they have cut, and they're going to keep that cut for the coming month at least. Today in the world, the consumption of uh, oil, we're talking about 101 million barrels a day. So basically, uh, that gives you an idea. Even though the rhetoric is that uh, we have to keep doing that transition as soon as possible in order to avoid the global warming, the reality is that uh, the consumption of uh, energy is going to increase by 23%, 23% by the year 2050, and not necessarily with an alternative energy is going to be ready in order to cover that increase. So mostly fuel falls are here to stay longer than expected, and the countries, smaller countries like Equatorial Guinea say, guys, let's be fair, don't expect us keep the same pace that you are doing when you guys were having during decades all the freedom to pollute the world. So definitely there's a lot to do, a lot to say, and tomorrow is going to be the second day of that uh, international seminar here in Vienna, and we are looking forward to see what the conclusions are going to be. We are back to you, Gladys, now. 
So thank you, Jorge, for your insights and your description and criteria on this event. And as always, we are thankful for this time for you and 